Peace be upon you, brothers and sisters in Islam. Did Prophet Muhammad command a woman to put her breast in a mouth of adult as this scammer is claiming? The case begins with a woman named Sahla, Sahih Muslim, 3600. It was narrated that Aisha said, Sahla bin Suhail came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, I see signs of displeasure on the face of Abu Hudaifa, that was her husband, when Salim, who was his ally, comes in. The Prophet said, breastfeed him. She said, how can I breastfeed him? He is a grown man. The Messenger of Allah smiled and said, I know that he is a grown man. So Sahla's husband was concerned about this grown man being around his wife, and Muhammad's response was that she needed to put her breasts in the man's mouth repeatedly. Interestingly, Sahla did exactly what Muhammad and Allah commanded. She put her breasts in Salem's mouth so that he could suck on them over and over again. And this calmed her husband down. Why? Because he trusted Muhammad. Well, Muhammad and Allah say that if I just let this man suck on my wife's breast a bunch of times, I don't need to worry about what they do when I'm gone for the weekend. I feel so much better now that her nipples are in this guy's mouth. Anyone else want to hang out with my wife while I'm out of town? So this retarded individual is claiming that Prophet Muhammad told the woman Sahla put her breast to the man's mouth repeatedly. I challenge this joker to point out where did Prophet Muhammad وسلم, say this. Where did even the word Thadiq in Arabic which is for the breast is mentioned in this hadith. So we are going to refute him in the following points. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, never told the woman to put her breast. In Arabic, there is two words for the woman's this part. Thadi or Nahd. So, nowhere these two words, either Thadi or Nahd, exists anywhere in the Arabic text. So, this retarded lying charlatan has uh, created his own false narrative and eisegesis into the hadith, which does not exist anywhere. Prophet Muhammad never told uh, the woman to put her breast in the man's mouth as this clown is claiming. Rather, Prophet Muhammad he commanded that the man, man drink the milk from a cup without even any contact with the breast. This was a command for a special case which is not going to be repeated again. Which means that Prophet Muhammad gave this command for this case only. We will going to prove all these points. First of all, the reason for this misconception here is the translation of this hadith which is not accurate. Anyone who come across the English translation of this hadith might think that Prophet Muhammad told the woman that man should be have direct contact with her breast to drink the milk. This is because the word uh, which is translated as suckling or breastfeeding. So these two English words imply that the man should have direct contact with the breast to drink the milk. So in this video. I will do a counter response to those clowns and trolls. You know, we face lots of street trolls in the comment section who will flood this comment section literally by saying, Oh, do you doubt? Do you disapprove? Do you throw under the bus your own Muslim translators? First of all, I will respond to all their claims. Refute their claims by saying, Those Muslim translators, they are just like us. They are humans. They are not ma'asum. They can make mistakes. It's the reality. If you go to translations of any other languages, leave aside Arabic, whether it's Hebrew, whether it's Greek, whether it's any language, Hindi, Urdu, there can be mistakes of the translator on the part of translator because they are humans. They are not infallible. They can make mistakes. They can slip off. Even when uh, we Muslims uh, debate with the Christians and we post some uh, translations, the Christians they say, you know, this translation is not accurate. But we don't say to them that you're throwing the translators, your, your own translators, your own scholars under the bus. We don't say this kind of nonsensical claims or responses. So let's continue with the point. These two English words imply that the men have direct contact with their breast to drink the milk. However, in reality, the word rawa does not necessarily mean 
uh, suckling the breast directly to drink the milk. The Arabic word rawa'a also means drinking the milk. The rawa'a can be achieved without having the direct contact with the breast, which means by pouring the milk in a cup or something else. A woman can do a rawa'a to a baby without even the baby having contact with her breast. A rawa'a can be achieved by drinking from a cup or bottle. So this woman whom Prophet Muhammad told her to do rawa'a for a grown-up boy did not even show her breast to him. He drank the, her milk from a cup without even having contact. Which means that the, the woman poured the milk and then gave to him and will prove that insha'Allah. Muhammad told her to do rawa'a for him and when asked about how she will do, do that, did Muhammad really say to the woman to put her breast in his mouth as this lying children is claiming? Prophet Muhammad didn't even mention the word thadi or nahd here. So the thing which caused misconception is that the Arabic word rada was translated as breastfeeding or suckling. While it doesn't necessarily mean breastfeeding as in direct contact with the breast. And the great scholars of Islam already knew that the word, the Arabic word Allah does not necessarily mean suckling the directly from the breast. It also means drinking women's milk from a cup or anything else without any contact with the breast. For example, Ibn Abdul Ba, who was a great scholar in the 11th century, he said, This is how fostering of an adult, as it is mentioned. Milk is poured to the adult, and he drinks it. But that the woman should give her breast to the adult, as she does with children, this is not the case, because that is not permissible, according to the scholars. The case begins with a woman named Sahla. First of all, he is not telling the full story. This story have a background, and he took it out of context. He was adopted as son by both Sahla and Abu Hudayfa, her husband. They used to consider him, this boy, Salem, as their own son. As their own son. But when adoption was prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the husband of Sahla felt bad whenever Salim enters the house and see his wife. Because she isn't like his mother anymore. So instead of the boy leaving the house and to save the situation, Prophet Muhammad sallam advised that the boy drink the milk of the woman in order to become like his own physical mother. Both of this couple, Sahla and Abu Hudayfa, they had a strong bond with this boy, Salim. Radiallahu anhu majma'in. That is because they used to consider him like their own son. So this is the reason the problem has arose. So by doing this, uh, he can be with them in the same house without any problems. So he can become their family member, their own son. We can find this story mentioned in Sunnah Bidaus. So the Prophet gave this command for the case of Salim only. And this case will never be repeated again. Because adoption is already prohibited in Islam. And as we proved that the command of the Prophet was to drink the milk without any contact with the breast, i.e. by pouring the milk in a cup or something else. Now we will see how the hadith which David Wood quoted proved that the man Salim drank the milk without having any direct physical contact with the woman Salah. The Prophet said, breastfeed him. She said, how can I breastfeed him? He is a grown man. The Messenger of Allah smiled and said, I know that he is a grown man. Creepiest smile ever. So he is saying that the smile of Prophet Muhammad was creepiest smile ever. Now, we will turn the tables on him and prove that this smile of Prophet Muhammad is actually an evidence against his false claims. Now let's read the hadith again. She said, how can I breastfeed him? He is a grown man. The messenger of Allah smiled and said, I know that he is a grown man. So here the smile of Prophet Muhammad in this situation is an indication that he didn't command her to show her breast as this jerk is falsely claiming. Let me give an example to illustrate my point. Imagine if you are locked in a room with a person. And the only way out of this room is the balcony. So the person who is with you said, let's jump out of this balcony. So your response was like, how can we jump, we will die. So the person with you smiled and said, calm down, there is a swimming pool under the balcony. 
So here the smile of that person is a refutation of the idea of both of you dying while jumping from the balcony. It's not a creepy smile. Same case with this hadith. In this hadith, the smile of the Prophet Muhammad indicates that he didn't tell her to show her breast as this jerk falsely claims. But rather, he commanded her to pour her milk to Salim. And as we said earlier, that the word rada doesn't necessarily mean breastfeeding as in direct contact with the breast. But it also means drinking the milk after being poured without having any contact with the breast. Even Ibn Qutayba, who was a scholar in the 9th century, confirmed that the smile of the Prophet is a proof that he didn't tell her to show her breast. So he, the Prophet, said to her, foster him. And the Prophet didn't mean to say, put your breast in his mouth, as it is done with the children. But he meant to say, pour from your milk an amount, then give it for him to drink. And no method other than that is permissible, i.e. pouring the milk, because it's not permissible for Salim to look at her breasts until fostering occurs. So how will the Prophet allow for him, Salim, a thing which is forbidden? And what proves this interpretation, i.e. the interpretation that she poured the milk without showing breasts, is that she said, O Messenger of Allah, how come I foster him while he is adult? So he, the Prophet, laughed and said, Don't I know he is adult? And his laugh in this situation is an evidence that he made easy this fostering. Beside, Prophet Muhammad used to always smile. Even his laughter was not but a smile. And Prophet Muhammad himself said that smiling in the face of your brother is charity. So this hadith didn't even mention the breast. Nowhere in the original Arabic text of this hadith the breast is mentioned. So how come this joker jumped to the conclusion that Prophet Muhammad told her to put her breast in Salim's mouth? So Sahla's husband was concerned about this grown man being around his wife and Muhammad's response was that she needed to put her breasts in the man's mouth repeatedly. This guy is a silly clown. Someone send him back to the circus he came from. The breast is mentioned in some English translations. But we are bind by the original Arabic text, not the translation. Now here is another point which proves that the woman Salah didn't show her breast in order for Salim to drink the milk and become her foster son. But rather, she poured the milk in a cup and gave it to him. Here is the evidence. In Sahih Muslim, Salah said, Salim has attained what men attain puberty and he understands what they understand. He enters upon us and I think that Abu Hazaifa feels some discomfort in his heart because of that. The Prophet said to her, breastfeed him, and he will be unlawful for you. And what Abu Hazaifa feels in his heart will disappear. She came back to him and said, I breastfed him, and what Abu Hazaifa felt in his heart has disappeared. Now here is a very important point which will prove that Salah didn't show her breast. And that Prophet Muhammad didn't command Salim to have contact with her breast as this joker falsely claims. Here we can see that the husband of the Salah used to feel bad whenever Salim enters upon him and his wife Salah. This means that the husband Abu Hazaifa used to feel bad just because of Salim seeing his wife Salah. So how come the husband Abu Hazaifa will be satisfied if Salim touched his wife Salah while he dislike Salim seeing his wife? If for example a man named John John dislikes any man to enter upon his house and see his wife. So how come John will be satisfied if a man touched his wife? Same case is with Abu Hazaifa, the husband of Salah. He used to dislike Salim, entering his house and seeing his wife. So how come he will be satisfied if Salim touched his wife to drink the milk? In this hadith, we can see that Abu Hazaifa used to feel discomfort whenever Salim sees his wife. So the Prophet advised the woman Salah to do rida for Salim, i.e. by pouring milk in a cup and giving it to him. So that the bad feelings of her husband Abu Hazaifa would go away. 
and Salim would be like her foster son. And at the end, these bad feelings of Abu Hazaifa did go away. And he was satisfied. What Abu Hazaifa felt in his heart has disappeared. Abu Hazaifa's satisfaction here is a solid evidence that Salim didn't have any physical contact with the wife, Salah. Uh, fact, according uh, to Islam. Uh, the, the next narration that follows this one, 34-24, let me just read the last part to see what happened. She mm -hmm. goes, she returned, she returned after what Muhammad said and, and told him, so I suckled him. So she did it. She did exactly what you said she would need to do and was there in the heart of Abu Hudhaifa disappeared. So now the husband was happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you suckled this grown man? You gave him your breast to suckle? I'm okay right now because that means now he's our foster son. Yeah, we're, we're all good now. <laughs> How come Abu Hazaifa will be satisfied if Salim touched his wife while he doesn't even like when Salim sees her, you buffoon? 1. The Arabic word rida doesn't necessarily mean suckling the milk directly from the breast, but it also means drinking the milk after being poured without any direct contact with the breast. 2. The smile of Prophet Muhammad is a clear indication that he didn't tell her to put breast in mouth of Salim as the scammer was claiming. 3. The discomfort which have gone away from the heart of Abu Hazaifa is more than enough solid evidence that Salim didn't have any contact with the breast. 4. All the great knowledgeable Muslim scholars agree with this conclusion. We are not waiting for charlatans to teach us. So in this part, we proved that Prophet Muhammad didn't command Salah to put breast in mouth of Salim, as this idiot was claiming. And in previous part, we proved with undeniable evidences and references that the hadith of sheep eating so-called adult suckling verse is misattributed to Aisha. In next part, we will prove that this command was for the case of Salim only. And that Prophet Muhammad himself said that Radara is for infants only. It's funny how Christian apologists are speaking about morals while their so-called Holy Bible commands mass killing of women, children, and infants. And mass annihilation of entire cities without mercy. The Bible says, do not leave alive anything that breathes. The Bible says, to kill women and children without showing mercy. while Prophet Muhammad forbade killing of children and women during battles. The Bible says, Blessed are those who smash your children against rocks. Smashing children against rocks is considered as a blessing according to Bible. The Bible commands rape of women. The Bible commands ripping the wombs of pregnant women by the sword. The Bible commands burning people alive, while Prophet Muhammad forbade this. And when the Bible says, kill children, it's not a metaphor. Because according to Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 6, the children were literally killed. And mass genocide were literally done. We completely destroyed them, destroying every city men, women and children. But they didn't kill the animals. So clearly here, the biblical commands about killing children and mass annihilation of entire cities are literal, not metaphorical. So no need for silly excuses. So these are the moral standards of your Bible. If you want to speak against bad morals, speak first against your Bible. Your Bible is the only book on earth which commands mass killing of children and mass genocides of entire cities.